When you see headlines like this, that this is the worst financial situation that has occurred since the year 2008 during the global financial crisis, it makes you wonder what's actually going on with Silicon Valley Bank. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about what actually happened, how it happened, and what you need to be worried about for the future and what you need to keep your eye on. So let's get started with how this actually occurred in the first place. I want you to think back to a movie you may have seen in the past. Do you remember the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Don't look now, but there's something funny going on over there at the bank, George. Everybody was rushing into the Bailey Brothers building alone and they wanted to cash out their accounts, but they didn't have cash on hand because how they worked it is, of course, money was tied up into different real estate assets. So all of a sudden, everybody all at once wanting to pull out their money didn't work well for Bailey Brothers. In a sense, this is what happens when all of a sudden you have massive demand to withdraw money and the bank doesn't have that cash readily available to cash out. So SVB Financial, the parent company of Silicon Valley Bank, supports many startups and venture capitalists as its clients. They offer loans, they offer banking, but the issue was the pandemic. Here we are also having another pandemic issue. The pandemic brought a great wave of opportunity to new companies, especially in 2021. And as these new ventures came to be, there was a lot of cash flowing into Silicon Valley Bank. In fact, they ended the first quarter of 2020 with $60 billion in total deposits. And then that skyrocketed just shy of $200 billion by the end of the first quarter of 2022. So what they wanted to do is of course, protect those assets. So they put that money into what should have been very safe assets, U.S. treasuries and government-backed mortgage securities. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, if they put all that money into government-backed mortgage securities and treasuries, that should be fine. Why was there an issue? The issue is they pay a fixed interest rate over time. So let's say you bought into that and let's say the interest rate was only 3% when you bought in. Your goal is to hold it for a long period of time and get that uh, return on your investment in that particular fashion. But if you have to pull out the money earlier than that, when interest rates are on the rise, you could be in trouble because fixed interest rates at 3% fixed makes a big difference when the federal fund rate keeps going up. Now, all of 2022 and all of 2023, we've seen Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve continue to increase the overall federal fund rate. It's now up 0.75 here, 0.5 there, 0.25 over there. It keeps going up and we're about to see potentially another rate hike coming up here near the end of March. So it's not really a problem unless the bank has to suddenly sell some of those securities. Why would they need to suddenly sell some securities? Well, if people needed to cash out quick, just like the scene in It's a Wonderful Life. But you're, you're thinking of this place all wrong as if I had the money back in a safe. As interest rates continued to rise in 2022, on the balance sheet of SVB was a uh, very scary, unrealized loss of over $17 billion. Now, of course, if you were in charge of the bank, you would think, oh God, like if all of a sudden everybody does come up and they wanna start pulling out their money, we're in deep, you know what? So we gotta do something about it. And that's where this whole issue began. This past Wednesday, the CEO of SVB came out and said, okay, we're gonna try to shore up our balance sheet, make everything make sense. And what we're gonna try to do is sell off some of these securities now before it gets worse and just take the loss of $1.8 billion. And what they were trying to do is reset those interest rates to today's rates and then let that grow over the long period of time because of course, what a big difference between what the rates were back in 2020 versus what the rates are today. Big, big difference. Even mortgages themselves, some of you are still sitting very nicely at a 2.5% mortgage rate, but if you try to get a mortgage today, you might be at five or 6%. So of course, by doing that, that gives the bank flexibility in meeting their potential outflows and still funding new lending. But then things got worse because when they announced this on Wednesday, a couple things happened. First thing happened was their stock price cratered down significantly, therefore making it even harder to raise more capital so they can lend more money. On top of that, some of the venture capital firms said, uh-oh, I'm a little bit nervous, I'm spooked. Let's start pulling out our money of SVB to protect ourselves. And again, you have multiple people doing this at the same time, you're in big trouble. Here are some of the companies that we know about right now. It was March 9th and capitalist firms such as Founders Fund, Co2 Management and Union Square Ventures advised their portfolio companies to withdraw their money out of SVB, contributing to a bank run. The shares fell another 65% in pre-market trading on March 10th before trading was halted earlier this morning. So what if you had money in one of these banks? 
you know, this is the 16th largest bank in the world. It's, it's a serious business. Well, there's a couple things. FDIC insures deposits up to $250,000. The issue is some of these venture capitalist firms had money well exceeding $250,000. We're talking like billions of dollars. So the FDIC will cover up to 250,000, but there's a lot of uninsured money. What's going to happen there? And this is what we need to keep our eyes on. Very first thing we need to understand is what companies are still involved with the Silicon Valley Bank. Which ones still have their funds tied up? Because this is going to have an effect. Because not only is the bank faltering, if any of the companies have a lot of their money tied up into this fund that's above and beyond the $250,000, oh my gosh, they could be set up for a potential decline. This could be the start of a little bit of a concern like we had back in 2008. Not to spread any fear, uncertainty, and doubt. All I'm trying to do is give you some information and make sure you take that and really keep your focus on some of these companies just to make sure that if you're invested in them or if you have any interest in them that you're keeping a close eye on how things trend. So anybody that does have their money in Silicon Valley Bank will have access up to the insured limit this coming Monday morning. But if it's above and beyond that, the only thing that they can do at this time, the statement that I have seen from the FDIC is that they're going to be selling off the assets or what really remains of Silicon Valley Bank, buildings, documents, anything that they can sell to gain back some of that money. And then that'll be distributed to the customers and the most impacted. Now, as a result of this, there are some bank stocks that did take a hit today just because, of course, fear coming in from this particular announcement. But as always, I always look to look at the long term, make sure I have a financial foundation so I don't have to worry if my stocks go down. It is what it is. I can let it ride through the storm and then hopefully see some better returns on the other side when the sun comes back up. So the biggest issue here is it's not necessarily like they really did anything necessarily wrong. But what we see here is which banks actually misjudged the match between the cost and the lifespan of their deposits and the yield and duration of those assets. See, this is very different from the questions about, you know, the lending that haunted the 2008 financial crisis. This is a little bit of a different situation. But as money flowed into all these banks during the pandemic, buying the shortest term treasuries or keeping the money in cash would have actually been a little bit better. It would have insulated them from the risk of the rising interest rates that occurred throughout 2022 and 2023. But of course, it would have depressed their income. They wouldn't be getting that yield return. I will update the pinned comment down below with any updates that I see as to different companies that may be involved in Silicon Valley and that may have a little bit of issues in their future as a result of what happened here. There's gonna be a lot of headwinds for a lot of different companies that uh, might have some cash problems in the near future. What questions do you have? Drop them down below. I'll keep you guys updated. And we'll see you on the next video.